What's up everyone? I'm back with another laser review. I know it's been a while, but I have another cool laser to check out. One that's a little bit different and from a company that I have not yet covered on this channel. It's a company called Two Trees. A little bit different for a laser company. And they sent out a kind of a unique looking laser that should have about the same power as the X-Tool and the Alfero. Let's put it together and put it to the test. So this is another company that has some pretty nice retail packaging for their laser. The only other company that I saw that had the finished looking retail packaging was the Atom Stack. I don't know if that's really an indicator of the quality of the product in and of itself, but I do think it's quite interesting. So let's go ahead and open these up and let's see what the parts look like inside. It's kind of nice that the drag chain already has all the cables mounted in it. There's a lot of connections in here, and it also looks like there's a built-in air hose for an air assist. And here is the brains right here. That is very interesting. Box two of our three boxes for two trees. A data sheet. Um, What's the twine for, guys? Uh, I'm all right. That's a new one. Not sure there. Here is our laser module. And on first inspection, that's kind of nice. Check that out. This is the first one that I've seen so far. I know that some of the newer models of some of the other uh, lasers have this, but we have this for lowering and raising the laser head, which is all contained right there. It's very different. And it also has a housing built in for the air assist. Although I don't think they provided me a pump, but I already have one, so I could just use that same one. Almost always a valve from Valve. Anyways, all right, let's keep going. Three, open. All right. We got everything unpacked. Time to put this together. Laser assemble. Sorry, I don't have the budget for that effect. I just let me let me put it together. So the Two Trees TS2 features a 450 millimeter by 450 millimeter cutting area, although it's a little bit deceptive because if you look here at our 
fancy little chart on the machine, it says it goes up to 580, if you could read that from the soft focus on the camera. I have a feeling that they have the 450 by 450 as kind of a safe cutting area. And if you need that as a translation, that's probably about a 17 by 17 in terms of usable workspace. Not too bad. I think that is a pretty good cutting area. Some other cool features of the machine. The machine features a kind of emergency stop, a push button style start and stop. And simply push down to stop the machine. The next to that is an audible buzzer. If something goes on with the machine, that sounds, and I've already set that off a couple times because of the flame detection, which is very sensitive and needed some adjusting. <laughs> Behind the laser is where the flame detection is, and there's a potentiometer that you can adjust with a screwdriver to increase the sensitivity or back it off just a little bit like I had to. Speaking of the laser, the laser is right here. It is a 10 watt laser and looks a little bit different than other ones I've used before simply because it's not in a simple square housing, but has a large fan on the front, which is very loud that you can hear when you turn the machine. And if you can see behind the housing, it also has a built-in air assist if you have an air pump ready to go. And they even have the air line that's already preset through the drag chain ready for you to use. I think I mentioned already, this is a 10 watt laser, which is quickly becoming the standard with most diode lasers, although there are some that are up to 20 now that I'm still waiting to test. But 10 watts for a laser is a standard and pretty sufficient for most functions right now, as it will cut three millimeter plywood, although a lot slower than I would like. Another cool feature of this machine, the TS2, it has auto leveling on this probe, little probe right here. There's a script that will run in Lightburn or in Laser Gerbil that'll automatically go down hit that, it basically is a function um, limit switch. Once it hits the material, it'll auto raise back up and you're good to go for your focus. Now I have to say that I really like that feature, but auto focusing isn't something I was really even looking for or expecting in a lot of these lasers, simply because focusing lasers tends to be really easy. A lot of them have a flip down arm, either like with the X-Tool or simply a focusing block. And that tends to work pretty well but I do like that they have that built in. I'd rather have it than not have it. In addition, something else that I really like is, once again, you have a stepper motor attached to the laser to raise and lower it as part of the autofocusing, but you can also do it manually with this manual turn right here. And I talked about that earlier when I had taken it out of the box that it looks like the logo from Steam, a video game company. So, I kind of like that you can manually raise and lower. Also has a nice drag chain for both the Y and the X axis with all the wires that were pre-populated in it, which makes it nice because if you've ever had to run wires through a drag chain, um, it gets to be a little bit of a pain. There were a lot more connections than I've seen on other machines, but not too bad because they were all labeled and really easy to find and put together. Another feature I really like of this machine is that it has limit switches. Most diode lasers, actually all the diode lasers I've used so far, do not have limit switches. So we have one there for the Y gantry, and there's one under here for the X. As soon as you hit the side, it backs it off, and it knows where it basically is in the relative space. I can't tell you how many times I've had lasers move and run into the sides because they do not have absolute positioning built in and my measurements are off and it is a really horrible sound to hear and you think you're breaking your machine. But having the limit switches is something that I do not want to give up <laughs> and I hope that it becomes standard in all future machines because I think it's necessary and makes these diode lasers even better tools than they already are. So 10 watt laser, 450 by 450 on the cutting area, limit switches, manual raise and lower the laser, push button stop, flame sensor. I think that covers most of the different features compared to other lasers I've used. Other than that, I think we're ready to do a little bit more test cutting. I did one already just to fire up the machine. But now, let's go ahead and put it through its paces and see what this thing can do. So one of the things to point out with these diode lasers 
is a lot of the companies are really trying to close the gap between a CO2 laser and a diode laser and making sure that the diode lasers have an equal capability as the CO2s. And they're getting there. So the Two Trees TS2 will cut three millimeter plywood without any issue. I've seen reports and I've seen video of cutting up to about eight millimeter wood. I'm not gonna be doing that test. I don't have an interest in showing how thick of wood you could cut because it becomes really inefficient once you start getting past even three millimeters at this rate. You can search videos online to see people doing it and testing. I personally don't have an interest in trying to push that limit because especially with how slow you're gonna have to run it, it's never practical under that scenario. But three millimeter is, especially since this is kind of the standard material that most people are using for their lasers anyways, at least for cutting out shapes. And it did a great job. It had minimal smoke, and I don't remember I had the air pump running for this one, but it made a nice clean cut. And I have another example to show too in just a moment. So Two Trees sent me out a couple of files to test with, especially like Christmas decorations since we're just about into the holiday season. And it did pretty good with this cut. There's a lot of detail in the leaves and it made really clean cuts all the way around using their standard settings, using their recommended settings for three millimeter plywood. Now on the backside, however, lots of burning and smoke. I'm pretty sure there's a way for me to minimize that. And one is using ear assist, but a lot of this was the smoke settling under and getting that kind of flashback on the backside, but it is a clean cut. I did a similar test with the draft board, although it's sometimes called hardboard. And here it is. Next thing I want to point out with this is there are some smaller areas right there that were supposed to actually cut and punch out and it didn't. In fact, on the back side, you could even see this weird perforation that we got. And I'm not really sure why. That might be something in the settings that I need to look into with a light burn, but it did cut out most of it and it cut out the profile of this without any issue at all. In fact, it cut two because they're supposed to go together like this. So we have this little three-dimensional decoration here. And it did pretty well other than those one or two spots where it perforated but didn't cut all the way through for whatever reason. But like I said, that might be user error for setting a light burn. Um, although it's a pretty clean cut on the profile. So we know it'll cut wood. How about engraving? I would say that 90% of diode lasers are used to engrave materials. And they're really good for doing photos. And the Two Trees did a fantastic job doing a photo engraving. So that photo of Harrison Ford, which is a pretty famous photo. And the detail is fantastic. And that engraved at about 6,000 millimeters per minute at 50% power. I also wanna point out that I've been running all these tests with Lightburn, which is a paid piece of software, but well worth it. It is not that expensive. This will also work with the free piece of software, Laser Girl, but I've been having trouble with that piece of software. Um, so I've been using Lightburn instead, but both are similar in terms of the output that you should be able to get. I've just become more accustomed to using Lightburn at this time. So I wanna show a couple other materials that are not entirely standard for using a diode for, but I love that it's possible to do this. And one is engraving metal. Now I wanna be clear that when I say engraving, I'm really talking about marking. Since the penetration of the laser really is not deep enough to really feel any kind of material removal. Although this one gets really close. In fact, out of all the diode lasers I've tested, I think this mark on metal has been the best. So this is a logo from the Brotherhood of Steel, which is a logo from the Fallout franchise and that mark is fairly dark. And if I run my hand over it and run my finger over it, I can actually feel a difference in the texture on the metal. It doesn't really dip down much. There's not a whole lot of material removed, but it did take enough off that even closing your eyes, you can feel where that engraving is. And there's quite a few different applications of this. I've engraved flasks. I know that some people engrave computers and just other metallic surfaces. There are some limits you're gonna to have to look into their documentation and literature to see which ones work the best, but this is plate steel, and I'm very, very happy with that result. And I did run one more test. On one of the materials that they provided, they have these anodized coated aluminum business cards, and I engraved a logo for a channel that I'm 
in the process of starting four board games called How to Play. The alignment's a little bit off, but that's on my side for not having the alignment correct, but it is a very, very clean engraving at a very, very small scale as well. Since some of these details are extremely small and even hard to see when you're looking at it in front of you, but when you zoom in, the details are pretty impressive. This laser is a lot better than what I was expecting. There's a couple of interesting design choices for the laser itself. It definitely stands out from the others. It looks like a more substantial piece of machinery. It has features that the others don't, at least the ones that I've tested so far, which make it a step above a lot of other lasers in my book. So this is gonna be one that I'll be using quite a bit in the future. If you made it this far, I wanna say thank you for your time. I know it means a lot to take time out of your day to watch these videos and hopefully learn something about these lasers and maybe even have an interest of picking up one on your own. Speaking of which, if you are interested in picking up the Two Trees TS2, I have a affiliate link down in the comments. Purchasing from that link does benefit the channel and it is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to support the channel, aside from your views, which we really do appreciate, we do have a Patreon at patreon.com slash geekbuilders where we have different share rewards and some bonuses and a lot of things are gonna be added within the next couple months. So if you're in a position to do so, please check that out. We really do appreciate it. And you could also go to geekbuilders.net, which is where you can find information about the site, different videos. And if you check out the shop, we have t-shirts and other items available that also do support the channel. And we also think you'll like that quite a bit too. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and check out our back catalog. We have a lot of videos that we think you'll like and enjoy and you know, share them with a friend. Show them what you've been watching and something that might like um, as well. Once again, thank you. We'll see you in the next video and hope you have a great day.